Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session. This session is about the struggle of the inner man. I want to call this session, The Struggle is Real. Now, uh, let, me, let me say from the beginning, as I'm going forward, if you have any questions, or you just type them in the comment section, and we will be answering them later uh, on Zoom. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments or whatever, please remember to type them in the comment section. Now, many of us growing up, some of us were fighters, uh, uh, and so we're used to fighting somebody else. We're used to having an opponent, and we're used to coming up with a strategy to win against an opponent. But what do you do when the war is within you? What do you do when your opponent is you? And so that's what we want to talk about today. We want to come up with some, some ways to uh, uh, win in this battle of the inner man. And so I want to do that. Uh, we have three sections that I want to address today. The first uh, section is understanding what the battle is all about. In our culture, sometimes we have a thing where if we see somebody running, we just going to take off the running with them. We don't even know what they're running about. We don't know where they're running from or where they're going. But if we see them running, that's what we're going to do. We'll find out where we're running from later. And so that's how so many people live their Christian experience. They really don't have the understanding that they need. They just doing what mama and them did. And so today we want to take a moment to help you understand what this battle is about first. The next section is strategies uh, of the battle coming up with a way to be able to win the battle. You ever seen those people that uh, when they get in a fight, they will just close their eyes and start swinging their arms and don't know if they finna hit nothing, don't know what's going on? A lot of times we do that too. We just start quoting scriptures. We don't know what the scriptures mean, but somebody else said it, so we gonna say it. And so today we want to come up with a strategy of how to fight this struggle of the inner man. And then the third section is declaring victory in the battle. Sometimes you just got to stop right where you are and get a shout on because that was a moment of victory in that battle. So those are the three areas that we want to address today. So we'll start with the understanding uh, uh, the battle. In order to be able to do this, I want to go back to the beginning when God created man. The first thing we need to understand is that God was a king in heaven. And like every other king, he wanted to expand his territory. So he decided to come to the physical earth and to set up his kingdom in the physical earth. In order to do that, he needed a cre uh, to create man to be able to carry that out. And so the first thing I want you to understand is that we were created for a specific purpose. God has something in mind when he created us. The next thing is that we were created in a specific way to be able to carry out this mission. We were created in three separate components. The first is in Genesis, the uh, first chapter, verse 26, it said, God said, let us create man in our image and likeness. And so the first component of man is man is a spirit. And uh, this spirit is able to connect with God and able to see into the heavens and able to communicate with God. The next thing that it says uh, is that man was formed from the dust of the earth. And so we have another component, this physical component, this flesh component, this component that you see uh, every day. And then it said he breathed into man and man became a living soul. And so that living soul is the place of your intellect. It is the place of your emotions. It is the, the place that really makes you, you. And so these are the three components of man. Man is a spirit. Man uh, has a natural body. And man is also a soul. And each one of these uh, uh, components had a specific thing that it was supposed to do in order to carry out God's plan of colonizing the earth with the things of heaven. Again, the spirit was supposed to connect with God and commune with God and hear the things of heaven and to be able to then download it into the mind or the soulish part of man where 
then the mind or the soul begin to communicate with the body to carry out the things of God. And so that was the perfect order that God had set up in order for man to be able to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. And I need to say right there, at that point, God looked at it and said, yeah, that's good. Man is good. He is operating in the way that I have uh, uh, created him to do. So we weren't always crazy. You know what I mean? God made us the way we are for a specific reason. However, in Genesis, the third chapter, uh, uh, man disobeyed God. And when you disobey God, that is sin. And when man disobeyed God, it had a direct effect on each one of the components of man. On the spiritual component of man, it disconnected uh, uh, this, our spirit from the spirit of God. We were no longer able to communicate with God. We were no longer able to see the things of heaven and to bring them into the earth realm. And the second thing that it did is it caused uh, sin to take root in our physical body. Up until this point, Adam and Eve could choose whether to follow God and choose whether to disobey and sin. That's the way God made them. But at the point that they did, it caused a sin nature. This sin nature is there is a desire uh, in, in man's flesh to do things. Uh, uh, sin to it has a, a lust desire and all these evil desires and stuff it is it is inbred into the flesh of man and so the the other effect that it had on the soul now remember the soul was supposed to receive from the spirit turn and tell the body what to do but now that it wasn't receiving any cues from the spirit, now the soul has begun to take its cues from the flesh. Now, remember, the flesh, it has nothing good in it. Uh, there's a scripture where Paul said there's nothing good in the flesh. And so now the flesh is telling the body what to do in uh, 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 sending forth all its evil desires to the mind and the soul. And it's carrying these things out. And so that is the condition uh, that man was in, the fallen man was in. Now, let me make a point right there is that in that condition, man didn't have this struggle that we're talking about today. Uh, it was just listening to the evil corruption from the body and carrying those things out. The struggle begins when you're born again. And so what happened is Jesus came to die to pay the price for sin. And so when he came to pay the price for sin, it tells us in Romans, the fifth chapter, that one man sinned, that was Adam, and caused sin to come into the world. Then it says another man, Jesus, came and righteousness came into the world. So at this point, when Jesus died on the cross, now we could be, uh, 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 the debt was paid for sin. Let's look at a scripture found in Colossians, the 11th chapter. I mean, excuse me, Colossians, the second chapter, verse 11 through 14. It says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in the putting off of the body of sin of the flesh. And so when Jesus came, that's what happened. Remember, we're connect, we were connected to this body of sin. So when Jesus came and died on the cross and paid the price for sin, it was like cutting away the flesh from our soul, cutting away the effects of the flesh and the sin nature from our soul. And, and it says, and putting off the body of sin of our flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised us from the dead and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. So what this is saying, this is, this is the place where when Jesus came and separated us from this body of sin, from the, the curse of sin, from the sin nature. Yes, we can still sin after this point, but that sin nature, Jesus cut, uh, 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 separated us from that sin nature. And the second thing is that our spirit was, was rebirthed and it was quickened, as it says, and now it again was able to connect to God. And so now it is our spirit man is alive, Connecting to God, receiving, downloading into our soul, but we are disconnected 
uh, uh, spiritually from all the effects of our body. And so it's just us living for God. And that is when the battle begins. Because this sin man that we are still housed in wants to do what it wants to do. And then our soul that's connected to the spirit of God wants to do the things of God. And so every day that we wake up, the, the, the flesh wants to do what it wants to do. And then the spirit is downloading into our soul and our spirit to do the things of God. And it's that battle. Who is going to get the mind? Who is the flesh going to get your mind or is the spirit going to get your mind? So that is uh, what the battle is all about. And so uh, uh, many people in the Bible experience uh, this tug of war. Remember David. David, the man after God's own heart. There's a list of accomplishments that David did in the Bible. David was a great warrior. David loved God. David loved to worship. But there's a flip side to David, too. David was a murderer. David was an adulterer. David did a lot of different things that, that God uh, wasn't in God's plan. And so this battle ensues. So what I'm trying to say there is you can be in church all your life. It don't matter how long you're in church. You're going to have this battle. As long as you are in this body, you're going to have this battle. That's why when it's time, when Jesus returned, he's coming back and giving us a new new body, a body that is not corruptible, but a new body that that is is connected and will want to do the things of God. That's the whole thing that this battle is about, is that we are still connected to this fleshly body, but our spirit wants to do what it wants to do. And so uh, David is one example, but there's also uh, an, another example. Remember Peter. Now, Peter's walking with Jesus, and Peter is, you know, the one that stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, and you know what I mean, and professed who Jesus was. But a few short verses after that, Jesus, I mean, uh, excuse me, Peter is cussing and denying that I have a new God. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but how have you ever felt like one day I'm saved and I'm ready to preach and I'm ready to do it. And the next day, Lord, did I ever meet Jesus? And so that's because this battle is going on and it battle happened in, in, in everybody. And even Paul, Paul led us into uh, 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 the battle that he was going on in uh, Romans, the seventh chapter. We'll look at verses 21 through 23. This is Paul speaking. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Any, anybody can relate to that? It said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So what Paul is saying is I hear the law of the spirit and my soul delights in that. But I see another law in my members. I see something else going on in my body. So that is what the whole battle is. I see what's happening in the spirit and my soul delights after the things of God. But there's, a, there's another battle. There's another law going on in my members. Uh, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And so this is the battle that we have. And so understanding what happened and why we got to this battle, understanding exactly what the battle is. Now we got to come up with some strategies on how to uh, uh, win this battle. You ever seen those people, uh, 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 they come in like a whirlwind and you think they know how to fight, but when you get in a fight with them, you realize Shh, they don't even know how to fight. Uh, so many times we go to church and we got our Bible just right. But when we get in a battle with the devil, the devil sit back and be like, for real? You don't even know one or two scriptures. You don't even know what that scripture means. And so we really need to be uh, uh, certain that we know how to fight this battle that's going on. And so the first thing that we need to do is to renew our mind. Let's take a moment and understand those words. Renew. The word renew means to make new again. What was your mind when it was new? When we were first created, what was the mind? What was the job of the mind? What was the thought process of the mind? It was to receive from the spirit and to tell the body what to do. When we were created, that's what our mind was. So this word renew means we have to get back to taking the cue from the spirit and, and carrying that out in our body. We cannot receive 
from our body. What am I saying when I say that? If the, we receive in the spirit that healing comes from God and God has promised us healing, but our body tells us, oh, I'm hurting and, I, and, I'm, and I'm in pain, who you going to believe? Who you going to follow? Who you going to walk after? We need to be able to renew our mind and say, if God said it, if it's in heaven, if it's part of what God promised me, that's what I'm going to walk after. It says in Romans, the 12th chapter, uh, and be not uh, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transform, you have lived in this world, however old you are, however many years you've been here, and you've been programmed to think a certain way. You've been programmed to react a certain way. It is the world system. It is the kingdom of the world. You've been, if somebody get in my face and, and, and I'm just going to have, it's just the principle about the thing. So we've been programmed a certain way to think a certain way. So this word tells us right here that we got to be transformed. Our mind has to be transformed. So when I see something, I don't see it like the world sees it. I see it like God wants me to see it. When I see all the chaos that's going on in the world, with the pandemic, pandemic and social unrest, I don't see it as the world sees it. I see it and I say, God is in control. God knows what he's doing. My faith and my trust is in God. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about transforming your mind by the way you think. Uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what that is? To do what the will of God is, is to do what we were created to do. We were created to bring the things from heaven into the physical earthly realm. That is the will of God. And when your mind is renewed and when your mind is transformed, that is the mission that you will be about. The Bible says that we should have the mind of Christ. You know what the mind of Christ was? If you uh, uh, go through the scriptures, all Jesus said is, I'm going to do what my father say do. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. It's not my will, but it's the will of the father. That is the mindset that we should have when we are conducting our family and our business and our uh, going our jobs and whatever it is. Uh, we should say, what is the mind of God in this? What is the will of God in this? That should be our first uh, go to instead of how I feel about it or what somebody else said about it. So the first thing we got to do is to uh, uh, renew our mind. The second thing that we need to do is to uh, mortify the deeds in our body. Now, what this means is this means to kill off the, the, the activity of sin. Now, think about it like this. Dandelions. Every year, dandelions grow up in your yard. Now, what most of us do is we simply mow the grass and we look out and we say the dandelions is gone. I'm good. But how many know in a couple of days you're going to go out there and them same dandelions that you cut down is back in the yard. That's how a lot of us live our Christianity is that, oh, I'm not going to do that no more. And, and I'm going to come to church and I'm going to live right. And then how many know in a couple of days we're going back and doing the same things that we were doing before. But this word says that we need to mortify or kill those things. Now, this is, this is what I mean when I say that. My father hates dandelions. And so he called the true green people. And the true green people come out and they spray. And one time after they sprayed, he seen one dandelion in the whole yard. You can bet he was on the phone with them true green people. And he told them, y'all told me that I wasn't going to have no dandelions. That is what I'm talking about, is that we need to kill all the activities of sin and take it that seriously so that when we see something creeping up, we say, hey, wait a minute, I got to deal with this thing that's creeping up. So the first thing is to renew your mind. The second thing is to, to kill all of the activity of sin. The third thing we need to do is we need to walk after the Spirit. When we receive the Holy Ghost, See, I need to make, make this point. Adam was a creation. And so with the creation, he had the choice of whether to follow God or whether not to follow God. We are more than Adam because when we receive the Holy Ghost, it says that it gives us the power to become the sons of God. And so this power, we have more power to deny sin. We have more power to, to walk away from sin, more power to not. Have you ever heard somebody say, 
uh, uh, when I came to church and I gave my life to God or when I got baptized, he took the taste of cigarettes out of my mouth. He took the taste of alcohol out of my mouth. He broke the addiction. That's because with the Holy Ghost, we have power to be able to overcome sin. So we need to be able to tap into that power of God. And we do that by walking after the flesh. I mean, walking after the spirit. How many times you, you know you have that angel on one side and devil on the other side and you come to something and the spirit will let you know you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't make that choice. But we'll just brush that off and go on and do whatever we want to do. We need to learn to follow the spirit. We need to learn to have spiritual discernment. We need to learn to open up our, our hearts to be able to receive what God is saying to us. How many know that God always gives you the answer? The Bible says he always makes a way of escape. He always has, has the answer. Of where you, and then I learned from following and walking after the spirit, he knows me better than I know me. He knows what's good for me better than I know. So when I follow the spirit, when I walk after the spirit, I receive better things. But walking after the spirit is not something that just happens. You have to set it up in your mind that I'm going to get in this word. I'm going to know what God says. Many times we don't receive what we want to receive from God because we don't even know what the word says about it. So walking after the spirit is getting in the word and understanding who God is, understanding how God operates so that when you hear something, you know it's God. How many times something, you didn't heard something? And, is it God? or Is it speaking? When you get in the word, you will know that it's God and you will know that's something that you need to uh, uh, follow. And so following uh, 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 the, the spirit walking after the spirit, which means you want to tell your flesh. No, sometimes do you know that's what fasting is about? Fasting is about putting your flesh in check. That's what the battle is about. The flesh ain't going nowhere until Jesus return and give us a new body. So we can't kill the flesh. So the flesh ain't going nowhere. But what we can do is we can put it in check. We can have control over it. We can tell it no. That's what fasting is about, is telling the flesh no, weakening the hold that the flesh has so that I'm able to walk after the spirit. Now, how, after I got my, my understanding of what this battle is about, and after I have come up with the correct strategies on how to fight this battle, how do I know when I'm even winning in this battle? How do I know when I have the victory in this battle? I want to call this the nevertheless moment. The nevertheless moment is when you reach the point where you say, regardless of what the flesh says, regardless of how I feel, regardless of what the information is saying, I'm going to follow what God told me to do. I don't know if there's anybody that's gotten any testimonies that said the report was this. But when I prayed about it and God told me to go this way, this is the victory that I received. So it is when you come to the nevertheless moment, when you come to the moment that I'm going to follow God, regardless of how the flesh feels about it, regardless of what society says about it, regardless of what's going on, I am going to follow God. God. There are some examples of this in the Bible. Um, do you remember the story of Job? Now we know all the things that happened to Job and the sicknesses and his children dying and losing all of his property and everything. And so all of these things that happened to Job. And if Job, if anybody had a, a, a reason to just say, hold on, wait a minute, I'm not listening to the spirit, it would have been Job with all that he was facing. But I reminded of a, of a scripture that Job says, though he slay me, yet, that word yet is the same word of nevertheless. So what Job said, we, Job reached that nevertheless moment. Though he slay me, though all this is going on in my life, though it seems like I'm not winning, nevertheless, I'm going to praise the Lord. This is how you know when you are winning this battle, when you reach the nevertheless moment and you can say, I'm going to praise uh, uh, the Lord. Now, there's one more example that I want to uh, bring before you, and that is the example of Jesus Christ himself. When he reached the Garden of Gethsemane and it was time for him to go to the cross and to die for you and I, his flesh rose up and said, wait a minute. 
I don't want to do this. I don't can this cup pass from me. But while in that prayer, Jesus said, nevertheless, thou will be done. When we reach that nevertheless moment, we're going to see some awesome things happen in our life. Even when it, and at this point, Jesus, the flesh didn't want it because it was going to be the end of the flesh. Doesn't matter how much it costs your flesh. If God is telling you to do something, you need to be reached the point where you say, nevertheless. When you get to this point, you can declare victory in this battle of the inner man. When you can tell the flesh, sit down somewhere, you can declare victory in this battle. When you can be hurting, you ever seen those, those sports players that they're hurting, they're injured, but because of the love of the game, they get out on the field. That's what I'm talking about when you're winning as a Christian. When this, it seems like the world is going crazy and it's affecting your finances and it's affecting your health and it's affecting everything but you can wake up and say to God be the glory and give God praise in it nevertheless what the enemy is trying to do I'm going to praise God when you can reach the point where you say you know what I don't even have enough money to pay all my bills but nevertheless I'm going to give to the house of God I'm going to obey my commitment when you reach the point where your health is failing when you reach the point where it seems like everything is against you when you reach the point where you're fighting addictions and you can say, nevertheless, that is when you're going to win in this battle of the inner man. Remember I told you, the struggle is real and it's going to continue. But we have the victory. God has made us more than conquerors. So wake up tomorrow ready to do the things that are going to grow your spirit, man. Ready to do the things that are going to connect you to God. Ready to do the things that are going to grow your appetite towards God and ready to do the things to kill the desires of the flesh. I pray that God has given you something in this uh, uh, time and I pray that it encourages you. I want to again encourage you uh, we will be answering uh, any questions that you have on this topic in the Zoom. Uh, they, we're going to send you a link, and so you'll be able to uh, get your questions answered. But recognize the worst thing you can do when you are in a battle is not realize you are in a battle because you are allowing the enemy to do whatever he wants to do. So recognize from this point on, you are in a battle within yourself, and you need to win by staying close to God. God bless you.